didn't say anything. He didn't say that he was proud of me or that I was like a part of him. He was suffering right along with me. He didn't say that he threw a father's heart on the altar of heaven every night and hoped God would protect me or that he sent a father's blessing into the bowels of this hell every day and hoped and hope that it would sustain me. He didn't say any of that, but somehow he said all of it. This is Charlie West's description of his father's parent and when of his father when his parents visit him in the jail cell. Having been through just about everything you could ever hope to put in an adventure novel in the past three books, Charlie is preparing for a final showdown with the radical Islamic supported terrorists threatening America's security in the thrilling conclusion of The Final Hour. In case you forgot the plot of my second quarter book talk, Charlie West was an average high schooler who also happened to be a black belt in karate, whose life suddenly he took a turn for the worse and the confusing as he went to sleep one night and woke up strapped to a chair with these terrorists called the Homelanders plotting to kill him. He then escapes and runs for his life, only to find out that he has been accused of murder as well and needs to avoid the police besides angry, deranged terrorists. As it turns out, a whole year of his life has disappeared from his memory somehow, and he goes on a quest to find his missing year. He finds out over the course of the book's next two sequels that he was employed by a top secret government agency to track these terrorists, and the terrorists managed to uncover the plans of the agency and captured Charlie. The agency had implanted a device in his tooth, however, which would release a drug that would erase a whole year's worth of his memory to prevent the Homelanders from retrieving their desired information. He escapes and then begins working with what's left of the agency to usurp the Homelanders' plans. Then he was arrested. In the beginning of the book, Charlie's in prison. He has been horribly beaten and mistreated by the inmates and the corrupt guards. A government agent pays him a visit to inform him that they had supposedly cracked down on the Homelanders, but other than that, West was alone, fighting for his life in one of the worst prisons within, with the worst possible people in the entire country. He finally has to strike a deal with one of the factions within the prison, and after what seems like forever, he escapes through the dark, unbearably horrid smelling sewers to freedom. But this escape was filled with twists and turns. It turns out that Charlie had betrayed the inmates who were taking him with them when they escaped, as he tipped off the guards, letting them know where they were headed so the police could capture the band of serial killers as soon as they exited the sewers. But as soon as they arrived at their destination, before they even knew the police were coming, their leader attempted to kill Charlie, in which case he used his adept karate skills to escape, as the criminals were more focused with escaping themselves to actually chase him. He was then rescued by his former mentor, and prepared to face his and his country's enemies, who weren't actually cracked down on, in New, York, in New York City. It turns out that their plot was to bomb Times Square on the night of New Year's Eve, when millions had gathered to celebrate the new year. The lives of millions are in the balance at this very moment, as, in the fate, as is the fate of the nation. Who will triumph? Again, this, The Final Hour is an Andrew Clavin novel, and it's the last sequel to the book I've already done a book talk on. But I figured it was still interesting and unique enough to have its own book talk. That's the way all of his books are. Each has so many plot twists and turns that sometimes I can't completely wrap my head around them or keep them all straight. There's so much more I could have put in this book talk, although I believe that this short attention grabber will suffice for a few minute speech. Yet, while his books are also different and unique, as I've said before, they point to the moral values which we should all hold to in our own lives. I'd like to wrap up this school year with the conclusion of a book, and what I consider the most epic book this author has to offer. But this time, I really encourage you to find out the end to this thrilling novel series. A one-page document, even if it's not double-spaced like a lot of teachers like things written, um, it can't do the books justice. Take the chance. Experience the thrill. Live the fate of freedom. <laughs>